Let's answer a question that everybody wants to know. How much does it cost to rebuild a KTM engine? And just as important, do I need to do it? So let's answer the question, why are we rebuilding a dirt bike engine on a KTM? And the answer is simple. Um, dirt bikes are racing machines by design and it's fun taking them apart, honestly. Uh, dirt bike engines are not like car engines. They're small enough, they're compact enough and simple enough to take out in your own garage and take apart with your own tools. You don't need a crane to lift them out of a car. You don't need three or four people to, uh, to lift them out either. You saw the video that uh, with the uh, engine removal, it was just me. So taking apart a dirt bike engine is much simpler and they're almost asking you to take them apart and see how they work. Basically, this isn't a long uh, this isn't a uh, sort of a long uh, distance traveling engine like a BMW boxer engine or you know adventure bike engines that are designed to cross continents. This is a type of engine where the service intervals are measured in hours instead of kilometers and on top of all that the manufacturers have a recommendation to rebuild the engine every 75 to 100 uh, 20, 30 hours or something like that. Now the other question is, why wouldn't I just take this to my mechanic and have them do the rebuild? That's perfectly fine. That's all depending on if you have a mechanic nearby that A, will be expert enough to do the rebuild, B, if he'll tell you what they rebuilt, uh, what measurements they took, uh, what parts needed to be replaced, basically every detail of the process that they did, whether they replaced the suction pump, whether they replaced the timing chain, uh, you know, what condition the cylinder was in, all these things are something that not every mechanic is obviously going to be inclined to give you a whole list of. And honestly, you might not even be prepared to understand what they're talking about. So honestly, an engine rebuild, if it's something you actually want to go forward with, you should have at least a, a working knowledge of what is inside that engine. Uh, because even if you take it to a mechanic to rebuild, there's not really any point for them to talk to you about what they did in the engine if you don't understand. So the other question of do I need to rebuild my dirt bike engine is just as important because um, a lot of people see the manual, for example, or they see uh, 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 other racers, for example, rebuilding their engines. They ask, do I need to do the same thing with my engine? Well, the answer is, it depends on your riding. Um, let's take my example and the engine here on the table, uh, which has 170 hours. So we can count me actually as a, basically a beginner, a newbie, since I only have this engine for a year. I literally got it last year. Um, and uh, I, I wasn't a beginner bike rider. I've been riding bikes my whole life, but riding enduro was something new for me. So I wasn't basically going fast on this bike. And that's really what it depends on. If you think of the engine as basically, um, you know, uh, it's the wear is a function of how many RPMs and at what duration those RPMs are being held at. So really all the engine does is uh, make a piston go up and down. And the faster that piston is going up and down for a longer duration, the more wear that it's gonna, it's gonna have on it. So if you're pinning a throttle at a really high RPM just to screw around, or if you're going really fast, or of course you're a pro racer or semi-pro and you're really fast, uh, then yeah, you probably should take the engine apart uh, every 130 to 150 hours to rebuild that thing because there is going to be wear in there and there is going to be parts that you need to replace probably the top end definitely the bearings on the other side of things if you're a trail rider and you're casual um, I can say without a doubt that this engine doesn't have to be touched probably for 200 hours at least because um, as long as you're really smooth on the throttle, which something, which is something I am, even though I'm, I've gotten faster 
after a year of riding, um, I'm still not oiling on it. I'm still not pinning it to the to the to the stop, and I'm changing oil often. That's the other thing you really have to pay attention to. The cheapest and the most effective thing to keep your engine wear free is regular oil changes and air filter cleaning. That's taking care of all your bearings, that's taking care of cooling as well. Oil cools the engine and the piston, and the air filter takes care of your valves, your valve seats, uh, and your piston rings, okay? So dirty air gets in there, sand, dust, it wears against the piston and the cylinders, it gets between the valves and the seats, and it causes damage over time. Um, so those are really cheap things to do. 10 hour oil changes aren't that hard to do. 15 hours maximum. This is like filling up your fuel tank, okay? Once you do it the first three, four times, it's removing three drain plugs, one drain plug, two oil screens, changing the oil filter, pouring it in, it's done, okay? Change the oil often. These engines are small. They have 1.2 liters of oil. They need to be changed a lot. And as, as long as you do that, you're really gonna remove a lot of wear from that engine and you're gonna get a lot of time out of it. So my example shows that I've taken it apart at 170 hours. Um, I'm smooth on the throttle. I've done regular maintenance on it. Honestly, the only things I really have to replace are the balancer shaft, which is worn on the, on the plane bearings. Uh, you know, the valves and the cylinder head have some carbon buildup. Um, maybe the bearings and the engine case are a little bit rough, could be replaced, but the piston is in spec, the cylinders in spec, um, even the oil pumps aren't even slightly worn, it seems to me. So uh, I could have gone another maybe 50 hours on this engine before I would have taken it apart if I had known, but that's why I did it, just to find out and to tell you. We're gonna tell you today how much this actually cost in parts and tooling uh, to, to do a full rebuild. Uh, in, attached to this video in the description, there's a link to an Excel sheet that I put together. Um, this is specific to the KTM 450 EXCF 2020 model. And it'll even be similar to different models of KTMs, uh, different, mo different brands of bike. Uh, we'll also have the same general parts and even tools, but obviously the prices are going to be different and the part numbers will be different. So let's take a look at that and see how much it actually costs to do this whole job. So let's talk about tooling first. You're not gonna be able to rebuild an engine with a screwdriver and a wrench, okay? The, the main tools required for this uh, are some specialty tools that aren't necessarily KTM specific, but uh, as I've said already, ordering the KTM tools directly uh, basically removes any doubt that they're gonna fit the bike. If you know exactly what the measurements are, uh, which is hard to do before taking apart the engine. Um, you can order aftermarket tools, but at the same time, the KTM pricing for the tools isn't that bad. It might, might be a little bit more expensive, but again, it's not like BMW that's five, 10 times more than uh, aftermarket tools. So the tools total actually is over 740 euros. Now that includes uh, this, the specialty tools for the top end, the cylinder head. Those are the highlighted uh, tools which make are made up by uh, two expensive items the valve spring uh, compression tool and the timing chain sprocket puller which is 150 euros uh, that's just to pull off the timing chain sprocket from the crankshaft uh, in order to get to the crankshaft bearings uh, the inner races and rebuild the crankshaft now I didn't even do the bottom end crankshaft rebuild, but you do have to take off the timing chain sprocket to get to the inner races of the crankshaft bearing. So that's why I included those as highlighted because you can take apart the engine and uh, give some parts to a friendly neighborhood mechanic that w would have the specialty tools, preferably KTM mechanic that would do those for you. So if you did 
most of the work taking apart the engine and giving the cylinder head and crankshaft to a mechanic, you could get away with only 300 euros in, in tools. Um, so you wouldn't have to buy almost, uh, you know, what is that, 400 plus euros in tools just to do the cylinder head and pull off the crankshaft, uh, the timing sprocket on the crankshaft. So it's between 300 and 740 euros basically in just tools that are specialized for the engine. Doesn't include, you know, a typical toolbox for a mechanic on a dirt bike. There's a, a few other items that I listed underneath that I haven't priced out because they're not KTM specific and they're also very optional in terms of whether you want to get them or not. That's uh, forget Loctite. Loctite 5910 is just the uh, sealing uh, stuff you want to put around the engine case. That's not really a expensive thing. It's something you can get either in a hardware store or in an automotive mechanic shop or online. But the bore gauge, the micrometer, those are expensive items just to measure the uh, inner bore uh, of the cylinder and the piston uh, diameter and a couple other things, uh, which I did in the video. And my measurements showed that they're well within spec on, an 100, on a 170 hour engine. Now, let's move down to parts. This is another section that we divided into a couple sections because it depends on what you want to do. Um, the main thing that you probably want to have done when you take apart the engine is change the bearings and some of the non-piston uh, crankshaft conrod related items like the bearings, uh, the oil pump, uh, the water pump bearings and you know seals, all kinds of seals and uh, things like that, the timing chain. Um, at least you check those. The other things are the top end which include the piston uh, which includes the piston itself, the gaskets, the piston pin, and the clips that go in there, and the piston rings. Um, the cylinder is an item that I included, but I don't price it out because this is probably an item that, you know, depending on how you ride, might be 300, might be 500 hours before that gets out of, out of spec and needs to be replaced. That's an expensive item, I think over 300 euros, but again, um, I, I, I honestly don't know when it's going to have to be replaced. Uh, the other top end tools, uh, the other top end parts are the valve springs, the valves, the seats, the valve guides. Those are basically, as a total top end, uh, over 700 euros. Okay, so if you want to rebuild the top end, that's 700 euros, uh, 720 euros for your piston kit, uh, your valve kit, and the valve guides. Now the next section there is the bottom end which includes the, co the connecting rod, the, the connecting rod, uh, the big end bearing that goes around the crankshaft, and the crank pin. That's uh, over 270 euros. And then we have just some shims that go into the, uh, go onto the crankshaft between the, the inner race uh, of, the, of the bearings in a timing chain socket. That together, uh, bottom end rebuild is 350 euros. And uh, again, I'm not even rebuild, I'm not even replacing any of those parts. I'm leaving that as is because um, I just don't see enough wear in the engine for my engine to justify a replacement. The rest of the parts are those things including the water pump stuff, the, the oil pump, the balancer shaft, uh, items, uh, all the bearings. If you look at the engine bearings, we're talking the crankshaft bearings, we're talking the primary, the secondary shaft bearings of the transmission, uh, all kinds of bearings. The needle bearings on the transmission shaft themselves. Uh, so yeah, those individually aren't that expensive, except for the crankshaft bearings, those are 120 euros plus. Um, but if we just wanted to replace the engine bearings, the gaskets, and the other items in the engine, like the pumps, uh, that's uh, a, 700, a little over 790 euros. So uh, basically, if you did a first rebuild, I would say you're looking at a top end kit for 720 euros, 790 euros for everything else. So almost uh, 1500 euros for a top end rebuild, just in parts uh, for a KTM 
if you did the whole thing in the bottom end, you know, for uh, let's say 250 hours, you're looking at 1800 euros. So again, is that worth it? I would say absolutely. I mean, if uh, you're riding the bike and you paid 10,000 plus for it new, or even if you got it for a, for a, for a great price of, you know, 5,000 used a couple of years, hey, rebuilding engines is not, is, not, is not that bad of a deal, especially if you got a used bike, because uh, let's say you buy a 5,000 uh, euro bike and you put in uh, almost, uh, you know, well, 2,000 euros plus in tools and parts, you got yourself a brand new bike, okay? Um, I think that's a great deal. So uh, the fact that these engines are so compact and easy to take apart in your garage, I think it's a, I think it's a no-brainer.